This week's episode of TTRL is sponsored by Focus, a short film written and directed by Mike Day of Day Vision Films. After years of working as a reporter for Channel 8 News, Denise Douglas is determined to become the newest face of the station. As she attempts to impress her boss and get a jump on the competition, Denise is confronted with the reality of how racism and sexism often shortchange working black women. The young reporter must find a way to secure her dream job without compromising her pay and beliefs. Day Vision Films will host a private screening coming this October. Stay tuned on Terra Talks Ryan Listens for your chance to see it before it hits your local film festivals. To stay with the latest news, follow the movie page on Instagram at Focus Short Film. You can also follow Day Vision Films on IG and Facebook. Now let's hop into the show. All right, so we are back for another episode of Terra Talks. Ryan listens because that's what podcasts do. They make new episodes when they say they're going to make new episodes. Wow. For us, we're a weekly podcast, so it's weekly time. <laughs> hey, y'all. We're here again. This is T. Carr and Ricey here with you, Terra Talks Ryan Lessons or TTRL, whatever you want to call it. And we are just going to open up quickly. Um, I want to give a shout out to a few of my favorite podcasts because right now I am supposed to be reading books so I can meet my my annual book deadline goal of what like 20 or 30 books a year but I can't get away from podcasts so I've been catching up on some of my favorite podcasts so I wanted to share a few of those with y'all so um one of our friends Sierra Howard has a podcast it's called I Don't Do Budgets such a really good podcast it's it's really good it's got a lot of really good financial information for young people like ourselves you know yes. out here trying to make it in the world but have fun at the same time yes it's a personal finance podcast dedicated to millennials of color and the thing i love about her podcast is it's just real she so keeps real. it real she keeps it real a for, whole for real for a real, whole for real. And um, it's like practical tips that you can implement. And it's it's just really helpful to kind of, you know, because we're all torn between YOLO and let me actually budget and save up. and yeah, But somewhere between YOLO and I'm not trying to be broke next week. Right. <laughs> or I'm trying to have a house at some point. Right. And I'm trying not to get my car repoed at some point. <laughs> exactly. And at some point I want my kids that I'm going to have to have nice things and not be hungry so we we, we want to yolo but we also need to plan and prepare for our future and start start making wise choices especially those of us just entering into our 30s cough cough uh happy birthday jamika hey. um speaking of one of our favorite podcasts i was wondering why you was coughing <laughs> i was like i know i turned 30 i just say i'm 27 not for the fourth you. time everything is actually not always about you oh that's good to know i was starting <laughs> to feel like there was a lot of pressure on me yes y'all LOL. y'all know we've already given a shout out to uh jamika leap of faith uh and so check out her podcast when you get a chance that's always another good one um when you're talking about keeping your faith focused and staying centered and just it's another one that just keeps it real with you so um i i uh, had a nice little transition there because you know in your 20s it's all about just yolo and ball out and you think about it later and you can just borrow money from your parents but when you get into them 30s it's like oh it's all on me okay it's um, all on you and no longer all about you. Ooh, That's the crazy ooh, part about being 30. Um, another new fave of mine, Dear Kev on Stage. That guy is hilarious and I we mean, all know it, but we, this we've podcast. Known, we've known he was hilarious just from his uh, YouTube videos and little Instagram posts. And of course, I love his podcast with his wife, The Love Hour. And uh, Righteous and Ratchet is so great with Doughboy. But Dear Kev on Stage is just a different brand of I hilarious. I thought we had some hilarious questions coming in here. Right. And these are real questions that he gets. And it's like crazy stuff. Like, I think, I'm, I think my cat is sexually attracted to the, me. I... My my first response was throw the cat away. Right. Get rid of the cat. Right. That, that that's probably that's one of those cases where it makes me believe that maybe that cat is like the cat from Sabrina and TJ Witch. Or something. <laughs> like that's a real person. Right. Um <laughs> Yeah. So he, he refers to it as the best worst advice because some of the stuff he tells people is really just hilarious and not actual good advice. Right. It's like you can't 
I, you pretty much can't just do exactly what he says. But some of it is spot on. Some, some of, of it is, is really on. good advice, actually. Some of it may Hitting land in, you in prison. In between the jokes, yeah. It's yeah, really good advice. Of course, advice. you know. You, yeah, he's a comedian, so keep that in mind first. But go check that out. That's yeah, quite hilarious. It, it's, it's a good one. That's one of my favorite kind of quick daily ones just to keep you laughing. I just listened to it on the road. You know, we doing, we in the middle of our travel season for business right now. And I was listening to it on the road. I almost crashed that Land Rover that Enterprise gave me laughing. It's hilarious. Yeah. Luckily, the Land Rover had the lane assist, so it just kept me inside of the lane automatically. Anyway. And last but not least, The Knot. So um, a lot of you may know about The Knot. It's like a wedding planning um, tool, app, website, whatever have you. And they have a podcast. And so once I saw they had a podcast, I was like, oh, check it out. It is so good. It is so good. That's it's, cool. It's like real couples and they they walk you through their like wedding planning process. And um, most of them are like several years, like four, 15, maybe even 30 years after they've gotten married. Wow. And um, it's like good marriage advice is good wedding planning advice, like practical advice. Um, and one of the cool nuggets, you know, I love that word nuggets. I hate when you say nuggets. <laughs> one of the cool takeaways from the. Um, At least you didn't say tidbits. I know. I, I, okay, I'll use that one next. No. One of the cool tidbits from uh, the, <laughs> one of the episodes that I recently checked out, it said on average, couples do three registries, which is how many we have. Oh, okay. So we, I feel better now. Yeah. We chose to do Target, Amazon, and William Sonoma. William Sonoma is for like when I like to be you know, pretend black Martha Stewart and then there Target because that's everyday, like, right. real. Who doesn't love Target? I love Target. And then Amazon is like, I mean, of course, that's, that's where everything is now. Exactly. And it's great for online type stuff. So those those three really represent us. I had so many people saying, what about dealers? What about Macy's? What about this? What about that? And I was like, nope, nope, nope. We're just doing three. Keeping it simple. Right. Not doing more than three. And then so to hear that, that that is the average, I was like, oh, cool. So. Yeah, there we go. And then I also said the average couple um has a 14 month engagement isn't that like precisely what we yes because we are now at that halfway mark where it's been about seven months since you proposed and we're getting married in about seven months so i was like oh wow 14 months so man we halfway through this engagement we are halfway through this whole engagement which means we are this much closer to walking down the aisle jumping the broom and uh getting this over with i'm gonna be real a lot of people hate when i say that and I don't blame you. Right. I do not. Because people look at me crazy when I say, I'm like, I'm, I'm ready to be done with it. They're like, well, I, that's not a nice thing to ooh. say about getting married. I'm like, look, well, here's the deal. Look, we could have eloped. We could have eloped, first of all. Second of all, it's not about the wedding. It's about our marriage. And our whole lives together. And our together. whole lives We're ready to that. get on We're with ready that. to get to that part. This wedding stuff is stressful. If you've planned a wedding, you know exactly what we're talking exactly. about. Exactly. And I mean, I'm excited about it. Obviously, like... Right. Um, There's excitement. You know, yeah, I found my dress. It's absolutely gorgeous. You know, found the bridesmaid dresses. They're gorgeous. You know, so there are like little moments where it's fun and exciting. And I'm totally looking forward to like throwing a big party with all of my family and friends from different parts of my life like that's gonna be dope i bought a tuxedo jacket like three years ago because i knew i was marrying you i was just like you know what the- i see a good deal on this this is nice i like this smart i'm gonna get this now because i already know i'm gonna marry her yeah oh it's yeah anyway sweet. but yeah so like we're ready to get on with it but yeah so check out the knot especially those of you who are planning a, a wedding that they have some good tips in terms of like what other couples have done that have worked well and they have good advice and good ideas. So I, I'm really enjoying it. Actually, I'm kind of towards the end. I'm kind of sad to be done with it. So hope they drop some new episodes soon. And then... Um, hey, we'll be a featured guest. You know? I know. I we want totally I want to do it. I really... We need to figure out how to get on their podcast. Um, And then, so like I said, y'all know September is take a man on a date month i'm waiting yes so we down to one more weekend in september so right i guess it'll be next weekend i guess so <laughs> um y'all are sending me some really great suggestions so i really appreciate that keep up keep them up send me some more suggestions i'm trying to think of something really cool that that'll be fun for both of us but also kind of surprise ryan um but it's hard to surprise me so good luck i know and anything that would really be surprising is going to be too expensive too elaborate and i won't have time for it so we'll just do that another time but still send your suggestions because you know that'll be great we want to hear from you yeah we do so yeah um i guess at this point 
uh, are we jumping into what's going on in our lives? Or that was straight it. to your timeline. That was what's okay. going on in our lives. So yeah, we've been I'm listening to the podcast a lot podcasts, lately. And I'm taking you on a date at some point. At some point. Yep. That's a bit. So with that said, let's jump into your timeline because you live on social media, basically, which is not a negative thing. Yep. As like some people might have you believe it's, you know, normal. It's the life we, it's the world we live in now. Exactly. So yeah. So what's on my timeline? So Beyonce is sharing a behind the scenes look at the gift um well i'm saying is sharing it's actually past tense this happened already so this was on september 16th on abc and i of course missed it because we don't have cable so yeah those of you who watched it um let me know how it was i'm really hoping that she will um you know pop up with something maybe drop this on Hulu or Netflix or HBO or something because that's where I have access to things. Yeah. I mean, that's generally where coming mean, because what's the point in having multiple streaming services if you're still going to need to watch cable? Right. Cause I just, I mean, and the thing is I had, we have the ABC app. I just didn't see it on there. Maybe it's on there now. I, I, I pretty much only look at Hulu and Netflix at this point. So yeah, I'm pretty gonna, much going to miss it. But, um, yeah, if you've heard, like, there's so many people, like, other networks dropping their own streaming services now. I know, BET. So, at some point, you're going to, right, BET, uh, ABC, NBC. Um, Disney. Disney. Nickelodeon got one or two. Uh, we basically going to have to pay $10, $20 a month for every channel we were getting, paying $150 exactly. from Exactly. cable. So, then we're still going to end up paying more, if not the They're exact same thing. They're going to get to death yeah, with but, all these. But, speaking of Beyonce, mm-hmm. her hometown is underwater again yes i know so everybody make sure you send up a prayer for houston southeast texas overall in general yes beaumont call your friends check on your people make sure everybody's okay make sure you know make sure to find something you can do to help you know but um ultimately the civil engineers in the houston area need to be under investigation at this point why does this happen so frequently yeah because i've seen things about how other countries have ways what was it i I can't remember if it was switzerland or the netherlands one of those um countries that has made put systems in place to block things like this right it seems like the drainage infrastructure yeah yeah i don't know but yeah make sure you check on your people in houston southeast texas um also the effects of hurricane dorian make sure you check on your people on the east coast too and keep all those people in your prayers absolutely always So y'all may remember us talking about the billionaire, uh, Robert Smith, who was the commencement speaker a few months ago, and he shocked and awed the audience and all of us by promising to pay off their, uh, the graduating class student loans. Who? Who's graduating class? Are you asking me? Yeah. You never said Morehouse. Oh, sorry. You said (laughs) the guy who at the commencement speech, I'm like, what, what commencement speech, whose class, whose loans did he pay off? Be specific. You better hit me with the the W's and the H's. Right. (laughs) Uh, Who, what, when, where, how, why? Right. What for? Um, Let me tell you what else he did. Yeah. So now he is actually paying off their parents' educational loans as well. So those parent plus loans. Man, he's wiping those eyes well, and I think they said that's going to be another what thirty four million or something like that. Which to him is probably like nothing. Oh, here's yeah. a couple hundred bucks in our, you know, in comparison to what we would have. Right, but the thing is, like, he didn't have to do that. He, didn't have to he do just that. promised to do the the student loans. But a lot of people, when that happened, brought up a very good point of, yeah, you're wiping out the student loans, but what about parent loans? Because a lot of times there's there's a federal max of how much students can borrow. So a lot of times parents are forced to take out student loans because otherwise this, the student won't be able to finish school or won't be able to continue that semester because they've reached their max for that semester or for that year. And so, you know, it's that is a hardship as well. You know, it's all these parents in the middle class who make too much to qualify for, you know, grants and things of that nature, but don't make enough to just write a check and pay it outright. And so they end up with all these parent plus loans. So he he actually kind of I hope he's spotlighting a very, very, very valid point, because then, you know, students had he not done this, these grads would have to try to get a good job and then send a huge chunk of their paycheck to student loans and also to their parent loans, unless their parents just agreed to pay for it. So, 
you know that, that and that puts a student and a parent in a tough position where you, this, you're kind of awkward like uh yeah i need yeah. To, i gotta pay my mom back thousands of dollars <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars not just like oh my yeah i owe you 200 i owe you 20 like that's that is awkward right so i mean shout out to him for doing that and just relieving a lot of people of you know some tough financial pressure I, I hope more billionaires will do stuff like this because clearly we can't count on the government to to wipe this out as much as we want to to hope that elizabeth warren or bernie sanders is just going to come through and wave a magic wand don't hold your breath on that one um so i really like that that's kind of how i like to envision if we end up getting becoming wealthy so speaking of did you hear about the owner of slutty vegan no. Um, hang on, let me find a story because that just brought just reminded me about that. And as we wait for it to load. Mm. So Slutty Vegan founder. Slutty Vegan is a restaurant. It's a vegan restaurant. The food looks amazing. I have yet to try it because it's in Atlanta. But uh Slutty Vegan owner pays off debt for 30 students so that they can stay in school and graduate. Because you know a lot of the times these uh oh, lunch universities, debt. the lunch debts, the fees and stuff that you didn't know about or forgot about because somebody only told you about it once. It's just so many things that come up, you know, throughout the course of a college career. Um but basically the owner of the Atlanta based vegan restaurant Slutty Vegan is helping pay the tuition balances of thirty Clark Atlanta students. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh I thought this was a high school like the whole lunch school lunch debt thing, which that's a whole nother problem. But yeah, oh when, that's awesome. When you said billionaire stepping up she may or may not be a billionaire yet, but, you know, people are stepping up in the community. Yeah, so that's awesome. Uh, she herself is a Clark Atlanta University alum and was inspired to help students after she donated money earlier this week to help Khalil Perry, a junior studying mass communications at Clark Atlanta, who started a GoFundMe campaign because he was struggling to pay his tuition and was ready to drop out. So, man, that's that that story being about to drop up because you can't pay. That is such a common story. I've heard that from a lot of people. And just imagine if more people could step up because college has just become ridiculously expensive. Um, but yeah, so shout out to both of them for, you know, helping some some students out. That's awesome. Yeah. Check out Pinky Cole if you're in the Atlanta area and you haven't tried Slutty Vegan yet. Tell me how it is, because I'm not going to make it to Atlanta anytime soon. But, man, the instant I go, I swear that's the first place I'm going. So, Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade launched uh, a line of LGBTQ t-shirts in support of their son. Okay. And so, this is not the first time they've supported their son. Um, we saw them uh, not too long ago going to the Pride Parade with him. And, um, yeah, I think that was this spring. And so, they are, you know... They've got this t-shirt line on Instagram and I just, I love that. So it's, it's good. It's, it's, I think it's helping raise awareness. They're such really, I think they're great parents. A lot of people criticize them saying, you know, why would you do that? Because he's so young, like, you know, he might change his mind or something like that. And I'm just like, think about how many LGBTQ kids commit suicide because they are not accepted by their parents or by their peers. So, so wouldn't many, you rather just support them? Wouldn't you rather just <laughs> be there for your child and save their life ultimately? Because there's too many. And then if they change their mind, fine. Like, right. who cares? Right. What difference does it make? I don't know. I don't get it, though. Um, so, shout out to them. Always being awesome. You know, I've always loved her. Um, oh, yeah. She's one of my favorite black actresses. Um, absolutely still love her. Her book, We're Gonna Need More Wine. So relatable. So, The Boondocks. Hang on, I like I actually like the shirt. Yeah, yeah. No, the shirt is, is actually pretty dope. Yeah, I'm we definitely gotta support it. Yeah, because yeah, proceeds are going gonna... to help young kids who are in that community. Yeah, we'll be placing orders pretty soon. Yeah. Oh, they got shorts too. Oh, they got the whole okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna check that out. Yeah. So the boondocks. Boondocks. Um, first, let's real quick, since we're talking about the boondocks, let's talk about a hundred other TV shows and movies that are being rebooted. Mm -hmm. You heard about it's like 17 different titles that have come out in like the last three or four months that are have news of being rebooted. Issa Rae is redoing um, Set It Off. What? You, you hear about that? I did not hear that. What? Man. OK. So um, I don't know a whole lot about that yet. But of course, everybody's like, no, it's a classic. Leave it alone. It I, I, can see it. I can see a reboot. I trust Issa Rae with this. I need Queen Latifah to have a cameo, though. 
yeah, I need the original cast to have a cameo at least if they're going to use different characters or use a different storyline or something. Because let's be honest, um, if you saw the movie, only one of the four characters is still alive and she's yeah, out of Mexico. So Jada, yeah. yeah, so <laughs> Jada could be the only one with the actual re- reappearance. But yeah, I just need Queen involved at some point. In right. Some way, like the, the other three that, that are dead need to like pop up as a different character yeah and, you know that's just like a little easter egg for, and not have easter a little, egg, but, you know, little wink to the audience yeah you know a nod to us who saw the original like, oh there she is but it's you know obviously not her not like oh they faked their death and then pretended to be somebody else but yeah no i don't have the actors that. you know have a different role where it's like a cameo kind of like stan lee like the bus driver isn't the same guy who was at the uh casino but we all know it was, it was stan lee you know stan lee does the cameos in all of his movies right or did rest in peace but you know yeah i need to see something like that but like i said i trust these right with this I trust Issa. otherwise i'll be like yeah leave it alone so i'm still waiting on insecure though I, um punky brewster's getting a reboot okay and it's like too many of the name so anyway back to the boondocks everybody's everybody's calling this a reboot but it's not it's, not it's a season reboot. five yeah it's a continuation it's continuing so stop calling that a reboot that's like when family guy disappeared and then came back like yeah. that wasn't a reboot it exactly was, they were canceled and then continued. Yeah. So it's not a reboot. So yeah, it's gonna be on HBO Max. One of those streaming services, I was right? Which you is about. so annoying because I have HBO. Why do I need HBO? Right, Max? We got the HBO. Um, and then they add got on. HBO Go. HBO, HBO, uh, Go and Max. Hopefully, it's just all the same. If you got one, you got all three. That's what I need because so, I do not want to pay any more money. I don't to watch TV. Right. So it's going to be um, two reimagined seasons, and then a fifty-minute special, and then the original fifty-five episode library. And of course, Aaron Magruder is returning as the showrunner. That's all anybody ever cares about. Because season four was a little weird without him. Yeah. But if you don't know the whole history behind that show and its production, and the production team, and the people who are credited but not even involved, go check that out. It's a pretty interesting read. Um, but yeah, but Aaron Magruder is coming back, and that's what matters here. So, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau appeared in brown face and a turban at an Arabian Nights Gala in 2001, so 18 years ago. Yep. Wonder, and these pictures are surfacing now. I'm wondering why stuff is surfacing right is i think it's an election year in canada right i don't know but i just know he was the one that was was making some sense and we were all in love with him and you know we were all oh i still think he's like doing great at his job he is he's doing great work here's the thing he didn't come out and try to defend what he did he did not he he immediately just immediately was like yeah this is terrible didn't know better now i do it was absolutely wrong you know so I if here's the thing, whether you knew better or didn't, don't sit here and try to tell me that there's a reason that it's OK, because it's simply not. He said in 2001, we didn't have the same debates about cultural appropriation as we have today and or not. He didn't say that someone else in this article quoted say that. And that's actually pretty accurate. True. Um, And so I think to me, you you can you can put this in context of the changed behavior um and that's a good thing he came right out and said this was terrible like on the one hand i want to be like man yet he was 30 so you were old enough to know better it's not like oh i was 18 in college i had no idea um and 2001 really wasn't that long ago but culturally it really it was, was long that long ago. ago. If you think about, you know, we weren't talking about cultural appropriation back then. We, it was happening, but we weren't really naming it. We weren't really. And right. then social media. And has social media just, obviously made it a much bigger deal, a lot more accessible and easier to talk about. The thing is, if our if our white friends think about when we were in like high school, if they did something like that, we would, we would talk about it to each other. Be like, are you kidding me? Why are they do-? like that? Right, is right. so like we would not have a way to post it on right. social media and and call people out the way we most can of call us didn't even now. have printers back then to just take a picture and then post it along the walls in the hallways of the classroom or nothing like that so i just i do think i mean literally obviously, couldn't post it back then either 
you're crazy. You know I me. obviously I think it was wrong, but I he came out and and said it was wrong and apologized. He said I regret it deeply and I'm deeply sorry that I did that. It was something I didn't think was racist at the time, and now I know it was racist, which is different from the person in the I don't White see House. What the big deal is? It was just a joke. It was a costume. It was supposed to be right. funny. Right. Yeah. Now that that is different when people are like, oh, I don't see what the big deal is. It was I was you know it was a costume. You know damn good and well what the big deal is. You just can't admit to being wrong. So I have a little bit more respect for this man for admitting the right. fact that it was wrong you know what i'm saying people are not going to be perfect people are going to make mistakes because people are people right but i i was going to say that's different from the person that's in the white house with the grabbing by the yeah that clown and just oh you know we that can be dismissed as locker room talk you know so it's just like okay speaking of clowns i read a, i read an article um that said the circuses are struggling to find clowns because the top candidates continue to go into politics. Wow. Of course, it was satire, but it it was a hilarious headline. Oh, my gosh. I should have saved it. So, Ja Rule is apparently re-releasing his entire discography. For what? With new videos for every song he's ever made. Uh, okay. Um, interesting. Who asked for that? Who? Yeah. I mean... Because I'm not going to sit here and act like the music doesn't jam because it does. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sure, sure. But why re-release it? It's still there. Right. I still can access it now. This sounds like a fire fraud to me. <laughs> <laughs> he trying to make some money off some stuff he already made money off of. Bruh. I mean, because uh, on top of that, he going to spend money in the process. But, you know, whatever. I don't get Did, it. Is there any explanation as to why this is happening? So it just says double X. Oh, it's coming from double XL. Who knows? Well, I mean, there are different sources. Um, he just tweeted this. It doesn't really say a reason. Um, yeah, I'm just going to be honest. I don't really. I also wouldn't be surprised if it didn't happen. Yeah, that's the other thing. And it's not like a fire fraud thing. I'm just saying if uh, he thought it was a good idea and then, and then realized that it's not that great. I just feel like why wouldn't you just make new music? Right. Because he's not that old. He's I mean, trying look to at stay him. He relevant. still looks the same. He does. But maybe he, maybe he just knows that strength, staying relevant is going to be a struggle for him given his track record in, uh, in hip hop in terms of 50 Cent, 50 Cent and Eminem. They literally shut his career down. Well, but yeah, so it's probably not going to be a lot of people trying to hear his new stuff. Um, well, these young kids don't even know his old stuff. Exactly. They just know him from Fire Fire Fest. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, it's basically. I mean, I guess that's the career move to make. You know, he got a book too, right? Of course like he audio, does. Autobiography, Everyone has I think. a book. Oh yeah, you're right. Um. <laughs> so last but not least. KFC is hopping into the ring of this uh chicken fight. Why? And K here's the thing. I be I forget we even have a KFC. In. Right. I, I think we got two. I see commercials. I haven't we do have two. K- we have do have two in the city where we live. I haven't eaten KFC in so long. And growing up, that was my mom's chicken of choice was yeah. KFC. Um I had cousins that their mom would always get churches and then I had um, other family members that will always get Popeyes, but my mom, she was about that KFC life. Popeyes, churches, Williams, and KFC. It was like the battle. Oh, KFC had the best potato wedges. I will give absolutely. you that. Absolutely, absolutely. And then every blue moon, if you get to certain cities, like really, really in the south, you would get one of them KFC buffets that had the uh, corn. Uh, the corn nuggets. No, it was uh, cornbread muffins. Oh, that too. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, KFC's mac and cheese is everything. They had chicken fried steak on the buffet. That was my favorite yeah. part. Yeah. So their little buffet was hidden. Mm-hmm. But, and you can still find that in, in certain cities. The funny part is, you know how they got those famous bowls where it's like mashed potatoes yes. and then corn and gravy and cheese? Yes. I used to make that on that buffet when I was a kid. Yeah. So then when it came out, I was like, I feel like they owe me a royalty check. They used to do that in our high schools too. And I'd be mm-hmm. like, yeah. yes, please. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, I mean, but I, per- and oh, that chicken pot was so good. Anyway, Man. but I haven't been to, KFC in years because I just I prefer Popeyes but um yeah so they anyway that's not the point of the story the point is they are 
piloting a chicken sandwich that is sandwiched between two glazed donuts. So they're only doing it at select locations. So it's like three cities on the East Coast where they're doing it right now. I heard it was 12. Well, three cities and 12 locations. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Three cities, 12 locations. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, y'all ain't slick. This is the chicken Luther for those of us who watch the boondocks. Second of all, it's also been done before. Um, If you've ever been to a state slash county fair and you eat fair food, we've been eating sandwiches in the form of donuts in the form of sandwiches for quite some time now. But what really I really want to know whose idea this was. Well, I don't really care whose idea it was. Who thought it was a good enough idea to make it to market? Right. And the thing is, it's got to be where you're really not confident if you're only doing it in three cities and 12 locations. Yeah. Because to me, like Popeye's just went ahead and dropped it out there. You know what I mean? Right. And the thing is, I've had a burger that was um, with donuts as the the bun or whatever. Yeah, the Luther. Uh, you didn't see that episode. We didn't make it that far in Boondocks for you, did we? I don't remember. Um, but I've been I trying mean, to get her to watch the Boondocks with me for like three years now don't try to play me i've watched the boondocks before you and i tried to watch it right but we haven't made it entirely through it like we've done with all of your shows that is true Mm -hmm. anyway we're gonna get married we gotta compromise on the tv time sometimes especially if we're watching tv together because otherwise i'm not watching tv so yeah we gotta compromise all right we'll 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 add the boondocks into the rotation yeah but uh we halfway through Jane the Virgin. We are not halfway through Jane the Virgin. Oh my gosh. We not? are not. Wow. It seems like it's so long. It's a good show. It just seems like it's taking forever. You, you We've seen Friends forever. like 18 times. We've seen How I Met Your Mother like 30 times. That's pretty much all I watch when I need background noise. How I Met Your Mother is now your show. Basically, yeah. I just introduced it to you. You watch it more than I do now. And we're going through Gilmore Girls for the fifth time since I, since we've been together. You and I are not watching Gilmore Girls. I'm watching Gilmore Girls. Well, you are, but it's on a lot. When I'm in the room with you is what I'm saying. Point is, you got to make time for me and my shows, too. Because, like, you, I didn't even try to make you watch King of the Hill in its entirety. I just like, okay, I know this. You gave up. I gave I was up. watching it. I get, no, you were not. I had to force you. I'm like, look, babe, I really want you to see this episode specifically so you know where half of my random quotes come from. Because I quote, I quote Hank Hill a lot. A lot. Hank Hill is like my spirit animal sometimes. But... It's um I I just gave up and I was like look I need you to watch this specific episode with me, you know I think technically you're on season like ten now, but I stopped. It's like, ten seasons of King of the Hill. It's thirteen seasons of King of the Hill. Oh, Lord. I'm saying you're on technically on season ten because the last one I forced you to watch or begged you to watch was season nine. The last one you actually watched in order was in season two. Okay. So yeah, I just been jumping around making you watch a few random episodes here and there. Mm-hmm. Anyway, back to what, what were we talking about? The donut sandwich? <laughs> yeah, they started from the Boondocks, basically. I mean, but I'm not the Boondocks, stole it, but, yeah, you know. the Boondocks probably got it from other restaurants. Yeah, they the got point it from is, somewhere other else restaurants have, have done this with burgers. Um, and the burger that I had on the donut, it was one of those things where it was like a novelty. So, like, yeah, I tried it and it was fine, but I would never order that on a regular basis. It's hey, just, somebody else had a chicken and waffle sandwich. Who was that? Uh, I don't remember. They had like the waffle as a bun right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i don't, I don't remember, remember. Who did that. anyway but anywho the point is um we still waiting on popeye's chicken sandwich to come back yeah i saw i had one in memphis the other day yeah everybody saw you had one i was seriously you know i was in memphis for work and um i was just driving around looked up a catfish restaurant so, okay let me go grab some catfish because i'm gonna move for catfish as i'm driving i pass a popeye's and the sign says chicken sandwich we have it or something like that it was like poorly worded so I whipped that little uh, Land Rover into that parking lot so fast. I didn't even know what time it was. I figured they were about to close, but I get there. I'm like, so y'all really got the sandwich? She was like, yeah, we got five left. I was like, give me two of them. And boy, that was a great night. I was so mad at you. I was so jealous. <laughs> like, who calls people to brag about what food they're eating? 
Me. It's so annoying. You do too. I do too. I know I do. Right. But that's part of being in a relationship. You need to know what I'm eating. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> the don't point blame is. That on me like you don't do it. Okay. I definitely do. But the point is, you just made me want the chicken sandwich after I had just come to terms with not having it for a while. That's okay. When it See, comes I was back, going to get catfish. I wasn't even looking for it. It just it, I stumbled upon it. Yeah, it. the Lord just blessed you with it. Exactly. Oh. exactly. All right, all right, all right. That's all that's on my timeline. What is obscure news this all week? All right, the obscure news. Let's go ahead and start out with Florida man and his gal. Florida couple busted for a DUI. Had sex in the back of the cop car. What? Yeah. So basically, long story short, what had happened was drunk driving, get arrested, they're in handcuffs. Somehow they managed to get the handcuffs. Well, they had the handcuffs on still. They managed to get him completely out of his clothes. Her pants were down. Uh, her, her vagina was exposed and her bra was off. Somehow they They're managed to magicians. do that. Yeah. Now they, they were still in handcuffs. So the officer had to call back up to get them to calm down. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess they figure if they go into jail, they're going to be away I, from each other. You might as well get it in. I mean, oh I've, and again, they, they were arrested for DUI, so they were probably still lit. Yeah, only in Florida. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, the, the, the guy uh, tried to escape, um, escaping the hold of the deputy who removed him from the patrol car. But he was caught shortly after that in a cold stone creamery with no clothes on. Wow. Yeah, interesting. Uh yeah, so there was that. Don't ruin cold stone for me. Hey, does is marble slab still open? Because I prefer marble slab over cold stone. I don't know what that is. How you don't anyway? Basically, it's the exact same thing as uh cold stone, but the ice cream is better in my opinion. You remember marble slab in Texarkana when we was growing up? Never heard of it. Okay, so it's like around the time we got the cold stone. Like I think it was either shortly before or shortly after there was also a marble slab creamery. And everybody was like, you know, it was like the same thing as Popeye's versus KFC or Popeye's versus churches. It was like Marble Slab versus Cold Stone. Was this after I moved to Virginia? No. It was before you moved to Virginia. It was like ninth and 10th grade when it happened. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Anyway, on to the next. So, you know, we love tacos, right? We do. Everybody who knows us knows we love tacos. They do. Tacos are amongst my top three favorite foods of all time. Yep. I can eat the American tacos. The real tacos, authentic, if the you authentic, will. if you will, tacos, um, you know, pretty much any artisanal, vert, any artisanal gourmet, uh, cheap, cheap, Tex, uh, Tex-Mex. I love it. Any kind of taco, uh, Korean tacos, fish anything, tacos. fish taco, anything, you name it. It's a taco. I probably want it. Breakfast tacos. Breakfast tacos. You can't, I, I, you can't go wrong with me in a taco straight up. However, Photo of a taco bookmark from Indiana Library goes viral. Why? It's literally somebody put, don't have a bookmark? Try using a taco. Actual photo of an actual book found in the library book drop in Indiana. Ew, gross. So somebody literally ruined a perfectly good book taco. <laughs> they ruined a perfectly good book. They ruined the taco. You can still read the book, but I'm not sure. Burly. I can still clearly see the words right here. Mm. Let me blow this image up and I'm going to read it to you. No, you don't have to read it to okay. me. Just carry Point on. is, they, yeah, ruined Taco. It's clearly from Taco Bell. It's a soft taco from Taco Bell. And now I want tacos. Ruined. Ruined. Thank you. I want to eat tacos now. So I'm going to uh, post this on social media so y'all can see it too because it's quite hilarious. Um, but yeah. Somebody ruined a perfectly I, good book slash taco. I am taco. an avid reader, and so I have used just about everything as a bookmark. I have used business cards, receipts, post-its. Um, you know, I feel like in my 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 young days, I would use strands of my hair. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but never have I ever used a taco as a bookmark. Man, somebody was super high. Yeah, that's accurate. Had to have been. And last but not least, while we're on the subject of food, this nine-year-old girl filled an empty lip balm tube with cheese so that she could eat in class and everyone's clapping. Wow, brilliant. The St. Louis fourth grader got the idea 
from a back to school prank on a YouTube video. So basically she literally, you know how, so if you've ever run out of chapstick, like if you ever made it to the end of the tube yeah. without losing it, you can see it like it actually gets empty at some point. Yeah, I've never done that. I always lose it. Yeah. So I've, I don't want to tell you how I found out about the empty ch- chapstick tube to. on the air, at, on the show at least. I'll mm-hmm. tell you later. But um, yeah, so <laughs> she basically got a, a, what looks like a block of Velveeta. Oh man, her mom posted it. So it says, my nine-year-old has taken an uh, an old lip balm tube and filled it with cheese so she can eat it in class. That sounds like something my niece would do. That sounds like something I would have done. But let's These be honest, that's brilliant. These kids are blessed with YouTube. Like, right. They, they've got the world at their fingertips. We didn't have all that. We barely had YouTube in high school. We were juniors when, maybe sophomores when YouTube first launched. Right. And even we, then, it was like probably yeah, a couple hundred videos. Yeah, it wasn't like it is now. Right. There wasn't every single thing in the world on YouTube. Definitely didn't have that at no nine. Right. Shoot, we you were lucky if you had a full set of encyclopedias at nine. You feel me? We had to go to my grandma's house to get our. Right. And not to brag, I had at least three. I had like two at Graham's house, and then my mom got me one for Christmas in my mom's house. So I was always in my encyclopedias, but you know. Again, That's not why to brag. You're a nerd. Not to brag. That is why I'm a nerd. That's precisely why I'm a nerd. <laughs> Like, seriously, we had bookshelves in every, like, basically, at Graham's house, we had a big old bookshelf in the living room. And in Mama's house, I had a bookshelf in my room. So, yeah, I'm definitely a nerd. Back to this, that pretty much covers the story. I will post this on Instagram, too, so you can look at it. Um, I'm going to read this this part real quick. Have you ever been stuck in a meeting or in class and just wished you could have a little bite or a lick of some cheese without anyone knowing? No. Well, a nine-year-old girl from Missouri came up with a fix that... Fix for that and decided to fill an empty lip balm too with slices of sharp cheddar cheese. Oh, so it's not Velveeta. She got the real stuff. Of course. Nice. That's how she rolled. On Tuesday night, the girl's mother, um, her name, a reporter for the St. Louis Post-Dispatch posted a photo of her daughter's genius creation to Twitter, garnering praise for the fourth grader who told BuzzFeed News she got the idea from YouTube. So shout out to her for admitting that she got the idea from somewhere else rather than trying to take credit for it. Um, But yeah, yeah. You can lick it and no one will know, she said. Her friends got a kick out of it. At first, I didn't tell them, and I was, like, licking the, quote, cheese. And then I told them it was cheese, and they just started laughing. So that's what the fourth grader said. Wow. It was quite hilarious. People on Twitter are getting their life from it. (laughs) Look at these tweets. Your daughter is living in 2079, and we're still here in 2019. Accurate. Somebody tagged Burt's Bees. No, they said Burt's Breeze. Oh, that's cute. Nice. (laughs) Uh, my size and face are hurting from laughing. I'm also so ashamed that I never thought of this. That's how I feel. But yeah, shout out to these brilliant kids. That is an absolutely brilliant idea. I wish I would have thought of it, but I'm probably going to do it too. Wow. Yeah. Because I mean, let's be honest, I love cheese too. So why TF not? With that said, since uh, we're asking questions, do we have any questions from our loyal and beloved listeners? Uh, we do. We do. Um, so remember, you can just email us at askttrl at gmail.com. That's A-S-K-T-T-R-L at gmail.com. And since we've been talking so much about food, I'll um, go with a food question this week. This question is from Anthony Bouvier. And Anthony asks us. Is that the dude from Designing Women? Yes, that is the nice. guy from Designing Women. Anthony asks us. Would we prefer chicken and waffles or shrimp and grits? That's a tough one. Isn't it? Anybody who knows me knows I love shrimp and grits. But at the same time, I also love chicken and waffles. Uh, yeah, I love both. And I mean, let's be real. Both are good good brunch selections. And I love a good brunch. Nice little mimosa. I'm going to have to go with... No, okay, so here's the deal. If I'm cooking it, depends on where it comes from, frankly. If I'm cooking it, I'm going to go with shrimp and grits because my shrimp and grits recipe is absolute fire. Um, Depending on where the chicken comes from and the chicken and waffles. Because a lot of places don't have that sell chicken and waffles don't have the best tenders or whatever kind of chicken they use. If the chicken is like tender and juicy and like natural and not that, um you know, processed chicken stuff that's frozen until you get to until you order it or whatever then nah, i'm gonna pick the shrimp and grits but if you can find me some like legit tenders and a non-ego waffle like the kind of what where it starts out is batter 
and it gets it becomes a waffle when you order it, then yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to say shrimp and grits to answer this question. So as much as I absolutely love shrimp and grits, I'm gonna answer this as if I'm at a restaurant at a brunch and ordering off the menu and I have to choose. Um, I'm gonna pick chicken and waffles. I actually, I, I go to brunch a lot. I've been to probably almost every place in our area that that serves a brunch and pretty much every time i go i get chicken and waffles and that's fine because then we end up sharing because i always get the shrimp and grits yeah yeah that's that's exactly what happens which is why when i go out without you i'm so annoyed because i don't get that opportunity (laughs) um but yeah so i uh i've had a lot i would call myself a a connoisseur of chicken and waffles at this point i've had uh, several different kinds and uh yeah i hadn't really met one i hadn't liked i've I've seen some better than others but yeah i absolutely adore chicken and waffles i remember the first time i heard about chicken and waffles um it was like roscoe's chicken and waffles Mm -hmm. was like the thing it was out in california we always heard about it on tv and we were like what that sounds so weird now you know like the two or three times i actually got a chance to go to california like the closest cool thing I got was in and out. Still ain't had a fat burger yet. Still ain't had the donut from that uh that donut place with the giant donut on top that we always see on TV. But yeah. Yeah. So it was like a foreign concept back then, but now I'm like in love with it. So I would choose chicken and waffles if I had to choose, but I still have love for shrimp and grits, which is why I'm so glad that we are in a relationship and, and can share food. Like it kind of creeps me out. Like if I were, if something ever happened to you and I had to be with somebody else and they didn't want to share, they didn't allow me to eat off their, their plate and share food, it would just be over. That's a deal breaker for me. Like, that's, yeah, that's a I deal breaker. That. I grew up with me, my mom, my sister sharing food and eating off each other's plates. That's just what we do. Yeah. Me and Graham did that all the time when I was a little kid. Like she always just give me a bite of whatever she was eating, whether I wanted it or not. And yeah, this is how I grew up, you know, sharing food. Cause it was always me and Graham or me and my mama or all three of us. And yeah, we just all shared our food. We were never like picky about who ate what and did X, Y, and Z. That's how I grew up. So I know no other way. Now, there are times when I'm like, you know what? I, I kind of want to finish this in its entirety. So let me just. There's been times where you and I are eating something and then I just order two because I'm hungry and I know I'm going to want the whole thing. Sure. So, yeah. Other than that, you know, yeah, you're absolutely welcome to it. So that's going to wrap up our questions for this week. We are just going to do one this week, um, but feel free to send us your questions. Hey, my man with the girl, the with the gal, your gal was smelling funny. Please check on. We, we want to know how you how that turned out. Let us know. Please yes. let us know. Especially because right after that one, Kev on stage had a similar question. Exactly. That's exactly what I was about to say. And I really loved his answer. It was hilarious. I uh, want to know if that was the same guy. No, nah, probably question. not. Well, no, 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 no. Because the, the, the description was a little bit was different. different. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's just, yes, it's a thing. It happens. It's a thing. Yeah, it happens to everyone. Yes, yeah. Actually, the bacteria vaginosis that we were talking about is like way more common than people actually realize. Mm-hmm. And there's like a million different things that could cause it. It's just a matter of like going to the doctor. But anywho, eat you some yogurt, some fruit and vegetables, and drink some water, and move on with life. So yeah. that's gonna wrap up our questions. And again, anyone with follow ups or new questions, just email us at askttrl at gmail dot com. A s k t t r l at gmail dot com. We want to hear from you. So our love life advice of the week, um, just want to kind of touch on this. Not, I don't want to get too deep into it because one, I don't really care. <laughs> Two, I, I don't, you know, I don't know how much y'all care, but um, Fantasia and her husband. So Fantasia was on the Breakfast Club, and she said something about submission and then um after that a lot of people went crazy and so she and her husband put a video on instagram kind of explaining what she meant by that so i just want to say my love life advice for the week is submission is not a dirty word it's not and the thing is like the reason why I said I don't care, it's not that I don't care, but the reason why I said I don't care is because everybody's relationship is different and everybody can do whatever works best for them. Um, but I'll just say coming from a biblical standpoint, um, you know, it's not about like control or um, it's not about, be, you know, demeaning your your spouse. It's really about 
communication and working together in a partnership. And it's about that triangle of your relationship where if God is the head and the man is in communion with God and then the wife is, you know, on the on the side um, you know, they say behind every good man is a great woman, but it's actually beside every yeah, great yeah. man is a great woman. And so, you know, it's just kind of a matter of, you know, trusting your partner. And um, and maybe if we use the word yield instead of submit, maybe that, that makes a little bit more sense. Little better, yeah. Does that make a little bit more sense where it's like, because um, I'm just going to be honest with you. all This is not something that I have figured out. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I barely know how to re- respond to this simply because I didn't grow up with a two parent household. Right. Both my mother and grandmother were single women, you know, throughout the most of my upbringing. So I didn't really get to see what that looked like. That played out. Yeah. Yeah. So I um I'm I'm just gonna say like I am a very like uh strong independent woman, and yes, you so are. You are. I am very used to kind of like making certain decisions for myself and I know what I want and I know what I believe is best and move on. And so something that we have, I think worked on over the years of our relationship and will definitely have to work on through premarital counseling. And then throughout our marriage is you talking to God about what you believe is best for us and our family. And then you and I discussing it and then us making decisions based off that. Exactly. And that's really all it is. And and people get all upset and think it's like the man being like, oh, this is what you're going to do. No. <laughs> yeah. No, that is not it. Ain't no woman of mine going to be like that. Yeah, that's... it's not that. It's not about, it's not a bad word. It's not a dirty word. It's not control. Um, it's really just a matter of communication. And I really thought fantasia did a really great job of explaining it in the video um the video you sent me only had his explanation and it just kind of cut off abruptly so i didn't really get to see the whole thing oh because it's a igtv i thought i was on the igtv and it like shut off and went to the next video maybe Uh, i was in the wrong you may have been on the the wrong wrong view or something but yeah but yeah i mean it's really um just one of those things where I, I liked their explanation of it. It's just about a partnership and communication and working together. Um, and a lot of times strong women, especially strong black women, just kind of steamroll their husbands and do whatever. And and submission is the opposite of that. It is communicating with your partner, listening to to them. And when your partner is really making wise decisions for the for the family, then that's not a problem. Right. Here's my thing. You and I are both very brilliant people. And I know that you trust me and my judgment and decisions, just like I trust you and your judgment and decisions, because this life is ours. We're combining our lives. So I don't really want you to just you know, and also people take the term submit and just assume it means the woman falls down on her knees and bows down to the man and, and caters to it. his every will. Yeah. And she no longer has a life because or, her job is to brain. serve. <laughs> yeah. And that's not what that is. No. You know, so, of course, we still got a lot of figuring out to do in terms of what submit, you know, can or may, may or may not mean, especially for us in our situation. Right. But the thing is, this is a partnership. Yeah. If you need my, if you need me, I got you. Right. If I need you, you got me. And frankly, there's no shame in that. And you I, know, a lot of guys take that as like a, like an under masculinity kind of thing where, you know, yo, your woman just going to blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, this, my woman is her own person, you know? So she can, she can think freely. I'm not in control of her. Right. But there have been some times where you have said, just trust me, like, and, oh yeah, yeah. And, if I know I'm wrong, like babe, trust me. Oh, uh, and that's trust so me. hard for me to do because I am, um, you know, I have anxiety and I have, um, you know, issues with knowing exactly if things are going to work out. And so it's hard for me because I'm used to just making decisions for myself. Now this whole partnership thing is hard for me to tr- to just sit back and trust you to handle things sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And so that is something that I have to work on. Um, but I will tell you when I do that, a lot of times things actually work out and I'm like, oh, oh, you got it. Oh, you really do got it. Okay. You're trying to tell you, I'll be knowing what I'll be talking about. So, you know, that's just, I just want to throw that out there just to say, 
uh, it doesn't really have to mean what a lot of people take it to mean just because some bad men have used it as that and tainted the word. Um, but if you have someone that's controlling you, that's a whole different issue. But if you have a healthy partnership, marriage, you're communicating with each other, then, and you believe that the man should be the head of the household, then. Right. The man can be the head of the household and still have a strong woman with opinions right ceo it's, it's, it's not and, you know and, either uh, or. And, and president or, or president and vice president that's how or, i look at our know, relationship yeah, i always refer to you as my vp exactly so so that's really kind of all it is and i just want to throw that out there um and not you, that you can't be president i'm just saying this when when people talk when we talk about versatile optics i always say oh yes my vp right you know because i'm not saying you're my secretary like you're not gonna be my lover and my secretary working every day of the week you're my partner okay mary j yeah you know but yeah so i didn't want to harp on that too much right right, right. just because you know there are always going to be people that disagree with that word or feel uncomfortable about that word um but i just want to say like kudos to fantasia and her husband i don't know them and i don't know their marriage but i agree with what they were saying on the video and um you know i uh I think that's just, you know, something that we have to to relearn as a culture because a lot of, you know, people didn't grow up with a two parent household. So you may not know what that communication can look like in a healthy way. Or if you did have um, a dad or stepped out in the house, maybe they were controlling. Maybe they were not the, you know, appropriate definition of submission. Right. And all the successful relationships I have been exposed to, there was no sign of a woman just throwing herself away at the feet of a man because it was her husband you know and again that could very well not be what that means but you know but i did find this uh this little meme i sent you yesterday did you see it where it says find a woman you don't have to take care of then take care of her right with a crown emoji at the end yeah i saw that i love that yeah that's how i feel about you but the thing oh that's so sweet you don't need me but the fact that you allow me to have your back the way i the way i do i love it I appreciate it. And that's hard. It is definitely difficult when you are used to being, um, you know, HBIC in every aspect of your life. And then you get into a relationship and it's like, oh, I can breathe for a second. I don't have to, you know, be the person, um, you know, I can I can soften a little. I can relax a little. I don't have to be that same person. I have to be necessarily at work or in other aspects of life. So it's pretty dope. Yep, I agree. And with that said, you may begin the show's wrap up. So we want to thank you all for listening and for tuning in every week. We will certainly try to have a new episode for you every week where you can listen on Apple Podcasts or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. And be sure that you are following us at This Is TTRL. Um, Drop some comments, some likes. Let us know how you like the show. And make sure that you're sharing the show. Tell your friends about us. We want to get more listeners always. And so uh, help us spread the word. We are This Is TTRL on Facebook. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and you can follow me at I am T Car. You can follow me at T H E R Y underscore C as in man. Hold up, it's the Rye C. And yes, I'm gonna say it like that pretty much all the time. Yep, that's, that's it. how I start my freestyles. And people are like, oh man, I heard you freestyle. That's how I started. It's man, <laughs> hold up, it's the Rye C. So yeah, if you ever hear me freestyle, that's what it starts. That's how it starts every single time. But yeah, um, pretty much wraps it up, right? That is it. We love y'all. Have a great week. Peace. Peace. I kind of don't like how we just said each other's closing line, but whatever. You're welcome. We are we are becoming one. Two we, become one. Basically, it's it's all. Get, get ready, get ready. We're molding into a hermaphroditic blob. <laughs> like a <high> <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, child. Peace.